Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we continue today our sermon series on the book of Romans, uh, based on a sermon series written by Dr. David Schmidt of the Concordia Seminary. And in this sermon series, we have been focusing on the big picture. And if you're going to talk about the big picture, you have to talk about the triune God. And so we spoke about Christ, our deliverer, the one who delivered us from our slavery to sin. And we spoke about God, our Father, who adopts us as his children. And so today, we're going to be speaking about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who works in our lives Now, to see the Holy Spirit requires a wide-angle lens. If we were to go to Psalm 139, the psalmist asks, Where shall I go from your spirit? And in answer to this question that he proposes, he meditates on places that he might go. He said, To the heights of heaven, God's spirit will be there. Down to the depths of Sheol, God's spirit will be there. If he goes to the farthest parts of the sea, even there God's Spirit guides him and holds him. The Spirit of God overwhelms the psalmist. He sees the Spirit everywhere. Today, as we contemplate Paul's letter to the Romans, I'd like to take you to one more place. Now, this isn't the highest heaven. This isn't the farthest reaches of the seas. No, the place I'd like to take you today is a hallway. A hallway in Florence, in the Gallery of Dell Academia. Now, this hallway is part of a museum. And um, as you stand there, you are surrounded by four pieces of unfinished artwork or stone. It is this, it is if as if time has been frozen. An artist was working, but then stopped in the middle of his work, leaving four pieces of marble. This is three of the four. The edges are rough. The stone is misshapen. These rocks look like they have been cut from a quarry and dragged to this place. But yet emerging from the blocks of stone are the beginnings of figures. Some have no faces. Others are missing arms, feet, hands. Yet you can clearly see the beginning of four figures. These figures were to be Michelangelo's portrayal of slaves, prisoners, begun by Michelangelo, but never finished. And so his work has been frozen in time. Now what they once were, rough blocks of marble, well, that is gone. And what they will be, beautiful sculptures, is not yet here. Instead, we stand here in the hallway in the midst of an awkward moment. The past is gone, but not yet gone. The future is here, but not yet here. We can see the future slowly taking shape, and yet the past is painfully with us as figures appear before us locked in the stone. Well, in our text this morning, Paul invites us into another hallway, the hallway of life on earth. And he asks us to see how we are caught right now in the middle of God's greater vision and work. So Paul begins by saying, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So in this verse, we have suffering and we have glory and they are held together in this moment. You know, just like the rough hewn stone, our present world is filled with suffering. 
you know, this world wasn't always a world of suffering. God had originally formed a beautiful creation, but Adam and Eve brought suffering into God's creation. They disobeyed God, and this brought God's curse upon the world. And our reading today spoke about how this curse impacted all of creation to this very day. And this punishment was set in stone, this suffering, and only God could free his creatures and from this stone bring out a new creation. Yes, God has begun his work in the world, and like the glimpses of figures in stone, it is only a matter of time before the full glory of God is fully revealed. So Paul writes to the Romans to help them stand in this painful moment, the middle picture. And his words come to us to help us to stand here today also. Because in Christ we have been made into the children of God. It was through his death. He has destroyed the power of sin which has controlled our lives and it is through his resurrection that he has brought the promise of a new creation. Yet, what we are is not fully seen and experienced in this world. We are imprisoned and suffering, groaning, as the scripture tells us, because we desire to be set free from the suffering, from the stone that holds us. And in this place, the apostle asks us to do one thing, to trust in the Holy Spirit. You know, with this walk down the hallway of life, as we look at these sculptures frozen in time, we can learn one more thing. You know, these unfinished sculptures of Michelangelo represented slaves, as I spoke earlier. So each is busy working, bearing his burden in the heat of the day. Well, as we use this metaphor for our lives, so too with God's people, we can see deep suffering among God's people as we walk through our world. Specifically, we can look at America and in America today, even in America today, we are suffering for being a Christian. And that suffering continues to rise within our world. And, you know, Christianity used to be a strong cultural force in America. Prayer was in the public schools. In December, you could go to the public square and the nativity would be prominently displayed there. But that connection to Christianity and in America uh, is dying. We find ourselves as Christians more and more being marginalized, pushed further and further away from public notice, written into a smaller corner of the public square. On the surface, it even looks like we're losing strength, like maybe we won't even survive some even wonder whether God has abandoned us. Unfortunately, some American Christians have confused the power of God with the powers of this world. Because if you take this stance, then the strength of God and his church are directly related to the strength of America as a Christian nation. If you take that worldview as an American culture turns against Christianity, Christians will actually begin to wonder about the love and the blessing of God. Has God abandoned his people? How can we be God's people, the church, in a non-Christian nation? Well, we aren't the first nation to be non-Christian where there have been Christians. And Paul happens to give us some advice specifically for this situation. Paul's words offer us hope this morning. Because listen to what Paul has to offer about God's love and blessing in this letter. 
because Paul knew the sufferings and the status of Christians in this world and and the, the Roman world at that time because in Rome, Christianity was not a legally established religion. Christians sought to worship one God in a city that worshiped many gods. Christians in Rome sought